by Avo Technology. Masters of the Air is undoubtedly the war film to watch in 2024. Produced by Steven Spielberg, the director of Band of Brothers, it took 14 years to meticulously craft, perfectly recreating authentic World War II scenes. In the spring of 1943, the 100th Bombardment Group is deployed to England to collaborate with the U.S. Army Air Force's 8th Air Force in combat against Germany. The crew, all inexperienced recruits, share a common ideal and quickly learn a harsh reality. Flying over the Gulf, they encounter a hurricane, prompting a tense maneuver directed by Colonel Buck. Despite the storm blowing them off the runway, Colonel Buck's calm command helps the pilot bring the plane back. Upon reaching the destination, the first airfield, consisting of four squadrons, welcomes them. Major Cleaver leads the 350th Squadron, and Major Egan is the base commander. After getting acquainted with fellow soldiers, a grand welcome party is organized, marking their last few calm days. The film's protagonist, Cross, a pilot suffering from air sickness, receives orders to guide fellow soldiers from Greenland to the first airfield. An unexpected incident causes them to lose contact with the formation. Discovering radar malfunctions, the pilots fix the issue and realize they have accidentally entered French airspace. Engaging in aerial combat against numerous anti-aircraft guns, they manage to evade the threats and return to base with minor damage. Despite the panic caused by smoke emanating from the aircraft upon landing, the situation is under control. Later, with support from their comrades, Cross and his team are taken to their quarters. A few days later, the new recruits receive their first major mission, an attack on a nearby submarine base, ordered by their commander. According to reliable information, in just half a month, German submarines sank 70 American cargo ships, causing a complete disruption of supplies to reach England. As a result, the US military was unable to advance onto the European continent. In response, the commander decided to have Cleaver lead a squadron positioned at a higher altitude, while Vale led another squadron at a lower altitude. The commander, along with the officer in charge, positioned themselves with a squadron in the rear. Meanwhile, the bomber squadron composed of new recruits would join the remaining three squadrons, totaling 78 heavy bombers in the battle. The commanding officer began outlining precautions, emphasizing the need to guard against both sea-based and land-based anti-aircraft guns scattered throughout the islands. As they approached, 88 and 105mm cannons would fire at them like shooting stars. Additionally, due to the presence of Würzburg radar guidance, their position would be tracked by the enemy. The mission route was a total of 14 kilometers, and they had to complete it quickly and return to the base. Upon hearing this, the members of the bomber squadron were both excited and nervous. After returning to their quarters, they discussed fervently, eager to make a mark on the battlefield. Once equipped, the soldiers boarded trucks and headed to the airport. Before boarding the planes, Buck encouraged his subordinates to perform well and drop all the bombs on the enemy. At this point, the standard bomber for US pilots was the B-17, equipped with 12 machine guns for all-around protection earning it the nickname Flying Fortress. However, to survive in battle, they had to stick together, as strain would make them easy targets for German fighters. After a smooth takeoff, Vale's plane had to return to base due to a malfunction in the number one engine. As they approached the mission target, the German ground forces quickly responded with countless anti-aircraft guns to welcome the bomber fleet. Bombers, unlike fighters, relied on dense formations for survival. Therefore, they could only pray to God that their planes wouldn't be hit by bullets, rather than disrupting the formation to evade destruction. At this moment, they learned that they were 11 minutes away from the target. However, the continuous explosions of anti-aircraft guns surrounded them, making every second feel like dancing on the edge of a knife. Bullets penetrated the steel plates of the aircraft, and the pilots seemed to witness a call from God. After enduring a long 11 minutes, they finally arrived over the bombing target. Due to thick clouds, they couldn't see the target at all. The commander did not order the bomb drop, and after much deliberation, they ultimately chose to abort the mission. However, just as they were preparing to return, the thunderous sounds of artillery suddenly ceased. The pilots didn't rejoice too soon, 
Instead, expressions of increased fear appeared on their faces. Some seasoned veterans seemed to have anticipated what was about to happen and hurriedly reminded the new recruits to prepare for combat. German fighter planes densely filled the airspace in front of them, swiftly passing through the squadron and launching attacks on the rearmost bombers. Under the intense firepower of the Germans, the planes were engulfed in flames and descended straight to the ground. Due to the prolonged exchange of fire, soldiers operating machine guns were scalded with blood running down their hands. The squadron was nearly wiped out, leaving only two planes. It was the cloud cover that provided them shelter, allowing them to escape back to the base. Confident before the mission, Buck and his team couldn't have foreseen losing almost one-third of their planes without dropping a single bomb on their first mission. Following this failure, not only did they lose over 20 planes, but they also sacrificed over 60 comrades. Before new pilots could arrive, the commander issued a new combat mission. However, before departure, the navigator fell ill and couldn't take off. In this crisis, the new recruit Cross was tasked with the mission. After successfully reaching the bombing target, a multitude of bombs rained down on the ground. The ground-based anti-aircraft guns quickly fired at them, and at the same time, German fighter planes joined the battle. Unfortunately, Cross and his team's aircraft were hit by anti-aircraft fire, causing the loss of power in the third engine. The pilot had to shut off the fuel supply to stop the engine, and immediately called for support from their teammates. After completing the bombing mission, the bomber squadron quickly changed direction. However, due to severe damage, Cross and his team's aircraft began slowly drifting away from the main group. The pilot could only increase the crew's power to the maximum and activate the boost pump. Unexpectedly, the engine couldn't continue, prompting the pilot to make a decisive decision. They informed Cleaver that they had to leave the formation. Concerned that Cross and his team would be vulnerable to a German ambush, the commander ordered the squadron to slow down until Cross and his team caught up. Cross and his comrades were deeply moved by this display of solidarity. Unexpectedly, they soon discovered that a German fighter plane was chasing them. The American pilots hastily engaged in combat, knowing that flying at low speeds in the air made them easy targets. Cross quickly devised a plan, instructing the American pilot to maneuver the aircraft into the clouds. As the plane entered the airspace over Scotland, Cross ordered it to descend to 1 to 200 meters and attempt a forced landing. In reality, Cross's decision was spot on. Just as the bomber squadron was about to approach land, Cross noticed that the remaining engine on their plane was also about to shut down. The pilot had to accelerate the aircraft to land it on the ground, while the rest of the crew inside huddled together. At the moment the aircraft was about to hit the coastline, the pilot, pale-faced with fear, could only watch as the plane headed towards a farm. Fortunately, the aircraft landed safely, and when their feet touched the ground, a wave of relief washed over them. Despite the lingering fear, Cross visited the camp later to check on the team. His outstanding performance in the aircraft earned the approval of his teammates. In the following days, the camp experienced an unusual calmness, leading to a grand party to allow everyone a much-needed relaxation. Little did they expect that, in retaliation, the Germans sent bombers to launch a surprise attack on their base. Countless anti-aircraft guns lit up the night sky like fireworks in the pitch-dark night as the camp was assaulted. Powered by Avo Technology.